So as we know, the autonomic nervous system influences the heart, and it has two branches, the sympathetic branch and the parasympathetic branch. So looking at the sympathetic branch, we have norepinephrine from sympathetic neurons, epinephrine from the adrenal medulla, and they interact with adrenergic receptors. On the heart, the cells of the SA node have beta adrenergic receptors, and when epinephrine and norepinephrine bind with those, we see an increase in heart rate. And the pumping cells also have beta adrenergic receptors, and when epinephrine and norepinephrine bind with those receptors on pumping cells, we see an increase in stroke volume. The parasympathetic branch is a little bit different in the sense that the um, effects are only on the SA node cells. So the SA node cells have muscarinic cholinergic receptors and when acetylcholine from parasympathetic neurons binds with those cells we see a decrease in heart rate but there is no direct effect of acetylcholine on the pumping cells because they do not have cholinergic receptors. So let's first look at how the sympathetic uh, nervous system affects heart rate. So here is an action potential of an autorhythmic cell. And how do you know it's an autorhythmic cell and not a pumping cell? Well, because it has no depolarization plateau. So we have millivolts on the y-axis and time in seconds on the x-axis. And so we have our graded depolarization or pacemaker potential, which if you recall is due to that funny, those funny sodium channels that start to leak due to this after hyperpolarization. And as we get closer to the threshold, we start opening some calcium channels. Then we hit threshold, and that's enough change in voltage to open the voltage-gated calcium channels. And so we have a rapid depolarization, the calcium channels close, potassium channels open, voltage-gated potassium channels, and we have repolarization followed by after hyperpolarization which causes the next funny sodium channels to open and so on and so forth. Um, the action potential keeps going. Well if we want to um, add the effect of sympathetic stimulation what happens is the effect is on the pacemaker potential. So I'm going to try to draw this perfectly, but the action potential part never changes, only the pacemaker potential. And what we see is that the cells become less hyperpolarized. So I'm going to put a little line here to show we're starting less hyperpolarized and they get to threshold more quickly. So we start less hyperpolarized and have a steeper rise to threshold and the action potential part stays exactly the same and I'm going to try to draw it. That's not too bad. We don't go as far hyperpolarized. We have a quicker rise to threshold so that line is steeper than that line. Then the action potential part is exactly the same. We get less hyperpolarized, steeper rise to threshold, action potential parts the same less hyperpolarized, steeper rise to threshold, action potential parts the same, and we end up getting one, two, three, four action potentials in the space of what was previously one, two, three action potentials. So by getting to threshold faster, we end up um, being able to fit more um, depolarizations in the same amount of time. So how does this happen? Well one is when epinephrine and norepinephrine bind with these receptors on the autorhythmic cells they cause an increase in the sodium leak. So that means sodium leaks in faster and we depolarize a little bit more quickly. We also increase permeability to calcium. And so again, calcium is a positive ion that moves into the cell, and so um, we end up depolarizing much more quickly. And we also end up with increased conduction velocity of action potentials through the heart. That's a U. It says conduction. Increased conduction velocity of APs through the heart. And when we do the... Um, 
EKG lab, you will see when you measure intervals between cardiac cycles that they're actually shorter, and that's because of this increased conduction velocity. So when you're looking for the differences, the first one, I'll put a little one here, is less hyperpolarized. And two is a steeper rise to threshold. I'll put that one over here. And that's because both of these effects are because of this increased permeability to positive ions. And then the third thing you see, of course, is more beats per minute. And so that is the effect of sympathetic stimulation. I guess we should have labeled that from the beginning. Sympathetic stimulation. So what happens when we have parasympathetic stimulation of the sinoatrial node. Okay, so if we have parasympathetic stimulation, we're going to slow down heart rate. And again, we've got time on the x-axis and memory and potential in millivolts on the y-axis. So with parasympathetic stimulation, then, we have a slower heart rate. And in fact, what happens is we end up more hyperpolarized. So I'm going to put a line there to show we're starting more hyperpolarized. And we take longer to get to threshold. So that's a shallower slope there. And so we take all this extra time to get to threshold. The action potential part, again, is the same, but we get more hyperpolarized and we take longer to get to threshold. And there's our only managed to fit two, almost two action potentials in the same space where we had three. And so this longer rise to threshold and more hyperpolarization is because when acetylcholine binds with um, muscarinic cholinergic receptors on the SA node, just to remind you, we end up having decreased permeability to calcium and actually increased permeability to potassium. And we end up with um, decreased conduction velocity through the heart as a result. Okay, so what we'll see then is one more hyperpolarized polarized so starts out more negative and a slower rise to threshold or a shallower slope of the pacemaker potential so look how much more time it took to get to threshold than it did here, all this extra time. And then the third thing, so that's number two, the third thing is fewer beats per minute. So that's with parasympathetic activation, and we so that's a decreased heart rate. And again, remember, there's no direct um, effects on the pumping cells of the heart with parasympathetic stimulation.